FM. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BamaOnline.com with you. And joining us now on the program, Bob Gaughan of the University of Buffalo Radio Network. Bob, a color analyst on Bulls basketball up there. Bob, first of all, given that Nate Oates had signed an extension here very recently, uh, was there was there still a, uh, an element of surprise in that he's moving on to another job? And and if so, was there even more surprise that it was Alabama maybe than a, another opening? No, I think what uh, the extension did was take all of the uh, mid-majors off the table. I think uh, people knew, uh, for instance, uh, just to stick along with the MAC, a couple years ago, uh, Akron had a really nice run, and they lost their coach to Duquesne. I think the ex- what the extension did for uh, the UB fans was would realize that uh, Nate Oates was not going to leave for a, a job like that, another mid-major. The worry was, though, that they, uh, University of Buffalo, you know, paid him about as much as they could pay him at this particular time, and that might be, uh, you know, a million dollars a year if he got, uh, you know, certain incentives. But there would always be a school like, uh, you know, Alabama that could triple that, and there's just nothing you can do when when something like that, you know, came about. So. Uh, there was always the worry that this this would would happen, and it did. And you know, what are you going to do when somebody offers you three times the money? And uh, I don't know what the figures are. I'm just uh, assuming it's two to three times the money that he was going to be making at uh, Buffalo. Yeah, it was an excess of three million for Avery Johnson, his predecessor. So not a, an unreasonable assumption that uh, that uh, Nate Oates is going north of two million for sure here uh, in his new gig. Um, but from a protection standpoint, I guess that extension did help Buffalo from a buyout standpoint, right? His buyout, I believe, went up uh, about a half million dollars. Yeah, I think it was actually seven fifty that the buyout went. But uh, yeah. so I mean, it did it, that did help Buffalo? But it, the realization was that uh, a school like the University of Alabama, um, you know, just last year, uh, Illinois. Uh, took a coach from Oklahoma State, Underwood, and uh, they paid him $2 million. So you knew that if Alabama, a school like Alabama or a Big Ten school or some, you know, school that had a, a lot of resources, that uh, the, the $750,000 was not going to hold them back at, at all, you know, from, from getting their man. That's kind of an Uber fare to some of the Power 5 schools these days, uh, especially with the TV deals and all the, the revenues that they're producing. Um Bob, let us know what type of guy is Alabama getting, maybe in terms of accessibility uh, and, and embracing a fan base. Talk about that uh, with with Nate Oates from that standpoint. Well, first of all, you're, you're getting, and I don't know if you realize this, the most honest coach you have ever heard in your life. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I mean, I've been around sports for 30 years. The things that come out of his mouth – <laughs> is so refreshing, and I don't know, and you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, being around football coaches and football coaches, you know, usually don't say anything. I don't know, again, I don't know Nick Saban, so I don't know what he says, so, you know, bear in mind that. But I'm just, in general, football coaches will not say much. Nate Oates will be, is the most honest and straightforward guy you have ever met in your life. And it's just it's just a breath of fresh air for for the broadcasting community because we just uh, love it the stuff that you know he would he would say because he would just be uh, as I said totally honest he when they beat Arizona the number one pick in the draft Aiton that uh, you know is playing for the Phoenix Suns right now he said you know we just we didn't think he could play defense very well we went right you know we went right at him because we didn't respect that you know how he played defense you just don't hear coaches you know, say things like that. And that is something that, that he would say. So I, I loved, I absolutely loved him. <laughs> I'll be honest. And I think that that's one thing that you're going to, you're going to really get a straight shooter up there. Uh, tell us this, Bob, in terms of style of play, it looks like, uh, his teams aren't afraid to get the three ball up. Um, for the novice fan, is it an entertaining style of play? Oh, is it, my God. is it one Most that's easy on the eyes? Oh my God! Most entertaining style. Here's the philosophy in in a nutshell for 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 a novice. The the Bulls took a shot every 14 seconds. 
down down court. So the reason they scored so many points was that they were going to take the first, they were going to push the ball, and uh, not only push the ball, but they're going to take the first good shot. And yes, if that first you know good shot, they do take a, a number of threes, but they move the ball extremely well. And they're not afraid to, you know, he was not afraid, at least the five guys that were on the court uh, for the Bulls this year, you know, any one of them gets a good look, take that, uh, take that first available look. And from an ana- analytics st- standpoint, he loved going up against teams that would try and slow the Bulls down, and by doing that, they would hold the ball. And they would take shots late in the shot clock, and usually when you do that, you take one-on-one shots and you take poor shots. So, I th- you know, his philosophy was over the course of a game, when you look at it, we're going to take better shots than you're going to take. Teams that tried to do that because we're not taking any bad shots. You know, the first open look at we're, we're going to get, and you want to hold the ball against, uh, you want to hold the ball against us? Fine. Hey, more than happy to do that because you're going to wind up taking a lot of uh Bad shots, one on one, late in the shot clock, and uh, that was just you know music to his ears. Talk about the defensive philosophy uh, of Nate Oates. Is it is it largely man to man? Does it's he all mix man-to-man. some things? No, it's all man to man. Pressure, yeah, pressure, man to man, man to man defense. Really good this year with uh, you know not he had two really great defensive guards that uh, didn't allow penetration in the in the lane they were great at uh, not allowing that many because of that the drive and dish game they were really good at defending which is so much of part of all, all of basketball now and the bulls were one of the best teams in the country uh when it came to assist to basket ratio against uh, against the bulls the bulls were one of the better teams uh, defensively against uh, w- with that so they had a but it was uh, you're not playing zone you're not playing zone you're going to be playing a uh, real entertaining uh, pressure man to man man to man defense sounds like a really personable guy um and obviously enthusiastic uh but in terms of demanding and and, and accountability when it comes to dealing with his players where where does he kind of fall in that regard is he a grinder is he more of a player's coach how would you describe him from that standpoint oh i think all of the the players uh absolutely you know loved him i mean he came into a a difficult uh situation here i'll, I'll tell you this in terms of a recruiter this guy recruited uh juco players uh really well his first year and i you know listening to what you said you know he he came into a difficult uh, situation where uh, when bobby hurley left for arizona state he took his best player uh with him and then uh one, his other best player got kicked off the team uh for violating the school rules so he was up against it and he brought in two really good juco players at that particular time and he brought in than the best recruiting class, the best freshman class in the history of uh, the University of Buffalo, two of which you know are going to be the, two of their top uh, you know uh, scores. So as a recruiter, this guy uh, you know came from Michigan, came from Romulus High School, where he was a legend up there, and uh, had a lot of Division One players. Caught the eye of Bobby Hurley. How about this? Bobby Hurley could have. Uh, you know, really hired anybody. You think about the connections Bobby Hurley has at Duke and the friendships that he has. Bobby Hurley's uh, brother, Danny Hurley, who's now the head coach at UConn, is at Rhode Island, and Bobby's his assistant there, and they wound up uh, taking one of uh, Nate Oates' players uh, out of out of um, Romulus High School, a guy named E.C. Matthews. And that's how Bobby Hurley even knows Nate Oates at that time. So he, there's not a great connection between Bobby Hurley and Danny Hurley and Nate Oates, but they respected Nate Oates so much that uh, from, from how they were recruiting this E.C. Matthews that when Bobby Hurley gets the job at, at, at Buffalo, he makes Nate you know, his, his top assistant. So of all the connections that Bobby Hurley had through Duke, he takes you know this guy that he respected just from being an assistant at Rhode Island and all the connections that Nate Ho- Nate Oates had at uh, you know in the Michigan level and all through the uh, the state of Michigan is probably one of the the top I, I could argue the best high school basketball coach in, in Michigan. So you know he's really I think he's got a lot of connections 
uh, through the JUCO world and uh, obviously in the high school world. As a result, I mean, I can only say that I think it's just a great hire for you guys. Bob, you mentioned the connection with with Bobby Hurley and, and how that all came about. In transitioning from Bobby Hurley, who left Buffalo to become the head coach at Arizona State, uh, paving the way for for Nate Oates to become the the head coach there of the Bulls, uh, was, was it a, a sort of seamless transition in terms of how they both went about their jobs, or was there a distinct difference between how Nate did it and how Bobby did it before him? Well, Bobby is a different guy than than NATO. They have a great uh, relationship to, together, but uh, just you know, from a media member, they're they're two totally, I think, uh, you know, different different individuals. Um, in in terms of in terms of that, um, I uh, I mean, again, I think uh, Nate's relationship with the media is one of the best that uh, you could possibly have here in in Buffalo. It was difficult though because he, he was, you know, Bobby's top recruiter or you know the top recruiter for Bobby Hurley, but he came into a very difficult situation as as I mentioned and he really had his work cut out for him and that's what was so shocking in his first year that uh, the Bulls were able to win the MAC title in his first year. And a lot of people thought that the the Bulls were going to take a you know a, a really big step back when Bobby Hurley left, and the fact that Nate was able to bring in a couple of JUCO players and then make that transition and still go to the NCAA tournament, you know, a lot of people were looking at each other like, "Wow, this was a." You didn't know what you got. You knew he was a good recruiter. You didn't know what type of basketball coach he was. And when he was able to do that in year one, everybody around around here looked at each other and said you know, this was a good hire. <laughs> Immediately, you knew this was a good hire. Bob, let's talk about from a staff standpoint, what's the early expectation up there in terms of Nate's staff and who might be staying perhaps as a, a lead candidate to replace him as head coach and maybe some guys on that staff that, that possibly could be in the mix to join him here at Alabama? Well, his recruiter is a, a guy named, you know, uh, uh, Brian Hudson. Uh, there's uh, their interim coaches, Jim Weitzel and uh, Weitzel. Uh, the, 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 those are the, I'd say, the top two guys, you know, on his staff. And uh, to uh, distinguish between the two of them, uh, Hudson was uh, just a great recruiter. I mean, a phenomenal recruiter, and uh, the the type of athlete that was coming into uh, to Buffalo because of Nate's. Uh, connections and and Hudson's connections was just a a real high quality <laughs> high quality basketball uh, players that were coming in and then uh, Whitesell was a uh, former coach at Loyola of Chicago and he was a, a great X's and O's so between the three of them between Nate Oates and Hudson and Whitesell he really had the best of of, of both worlds uh, up here. Uh, at the mid major level, he had himself who who was you know I think Nate is great at both I think he's great x's and o's, and I think he's obviously the great recruiter uh but uh, he had Hodson to help him i think uh you know recruit really well, and then he had Whitesell that really helped him uh you know x's and o's wise so those would be the the two names um that depending on which way buffalo goes and i don't know which way they are going to go and maybe both of those guys are are in the mix for the for the buffalo job but if they don't get it you know those would be the two guys that uh, you know he may he may bring down to uh, alabama with him well bob you've been a, a wealth of insight here and information uh, and giving us some background on Alabama's new men's basketball coach. Hey, before we let you go, are the wings up there at the anchor bar really that good? I guess they have to be right. I mean, that's where it all started with Buffalo wings. You know, I don't know how it is down there, but sometimes the first is uh, maybe for, for the locals is a little overrated. Like if you came, if you came up here uh, and I encourage you to, and if we ever went out, I, Sometimes they are they are the first and 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 they're good and they're good. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I think there are better places. And uh, if you ever if you're ever up this way, and I, uh, I and I took you out for uh, for a meal, and when you wanted the wings, I would actually take you to maybe a couple other places that I think you would enjoy. Give us more. a spot. Just give us another spot. Lenova, uh, Lenova's wings, uh, without a doubt, uh, the barbecue wings, absolutely to die for. I mean, you you would. Uh, so I, if I had to give you one spot, I would say 
uh, for pizza and wings, the combination of the both, for me, I would say uh, Lenovo. And you got to do the blue cheese up there? Oh, well, yes. I think it's a, I, it no might be a crime. No such thing as ranch up there, is there? It, it's a crime. I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if you don't, it is literally, you might get arrested. You might get arrested if you, if you ask for ranch rather than blue cheese, yes. So don't oh, do that. Please wow. don't. Okay. You're killing the Southerners down here with that, Bob. But, hey, <laughs> seriously, we really appreciate it. Best of luck to you guys. Uh, what a run it's been for the University of Buffalo. I don't think that's going to change probably anytime soon. But uh, appreciate it, Bob. And I'm definitely going to look you up when I get up there to the Ni- Niagara Falls, Buffalo area. I'm definitely going to do that. You got it. All right. First uh, first drink and first meal on me, okay? Nice. There he goes, okay. Bob. Go-